Hello, Senpai Recap is here. Please consider subscribing and don't forget to turn on the notification bell so that you are always updated with our uploads. The story begins with an underground battle in Thailand to find out who is the strongest warrior. We see rich people gathering here because they just want to see bloodshed. The host introduced the warrior Akari, who is Japanese and a karate master. Akari joined in the effort to save his childhood friend because she has a rare disease for which there is no treatment other than an organ transplant. The host started introducing Akari's opponent, and this is a very fierce and big bear that has never been defeated in this fight. When the bear came out, he was immediately chased and slashed Akari's face. Akari thought that they had no plan for letting him win. Akari was angry, so he told the audience that he would finish the ferocious bear. Then he jumped on the bear, trying to choke it, but the odds were still not in his favor. Before he could get up, the bear had already eaten him while he was alive. Just as his life is about to end, he thinks of his friend, who has a rare disease. Akari promises that when he recovers, they will do whatever she wants. Suddenly, Akari is filled with rage, turns into a literal beast, and stabs the bear in the eye with a sharp nail. He successfully defeats the bear and smashes its head into smithereens. Later, Akari asks to do the surgery for his friend, but apparently she has already died, and her body was sold to some shady people. The man pointed at his back, and he saw two people wearing black suits. Akari got mad at them, but the man revealing his friend had already died, and they did what they could to save his life. But Akari didn't want to believe it, so he kicked the man, but it didn't work. The woman explains that these people never intended to find a donor for her. His whole world shatters in front of his eyes. The man hugged him and asked if he wanted to save children with the same disease as his friend. The man introduced himself as Kamachi Shikichi, a captain of a Mars exploration team called UNASA. The woman is the vice captain, Michelle K. Davis. The two said that their friend's disease is a virus that came from outer space. The virus will continue to spread and millions will die. In order to stop that, in two years, they will fly to Mars. The following day, Akari woke up at the headquarters and was greeted by Michelle. She revealed to Akari that he had been sleeping for a week and had undergone surgery so that his body would be able to survive on the planet Mars, and Michelle added that she had also undergone surgery like this. At the place, Captain Kamachi is talking to the other three, who are also preparing for the surgery modification to go to Mars for the mission. Marcos, Alex, and Sheila are from Mexico. We also meet Adolf, a German officer on the mission. There's also Eva, who is also preparing for the surgery modification. Before going into surgery, the four were told by Vice Captain Michelle that their mission is to investigate the air, sand, water, and moss on the planet Mars and to find the cure for a virus that could kill millions of people on Earth. However, there is a problem. All the people who sent them to Mars failed to come back with the sample. That is because a certain organism gets in the way. Michelle showed them a Mars giant cockroach, which is called terraformers, a species of cockroach that evolved within 500 years. Two years later, the group of people heading to Mars gathered and boarded the massive spacecraft known as Annex-1, which will take 39 days to reach Mars. Their spaceship is already out on Earth, and Captain Kamachi announced that it's already on autopilot to go to Mars. While they travel, they go about their days like normal. Akari, Alex, Marcos, Sheila, and Eva become good friends. Sheila even admits that she's in love with Captain Kamachi because he was kind to her one time. Back on Earth, Hirama, the deputy commander of UNASA, is investigating a man, Professor Honda, who was involved as an engineer in the Bug 2 project 20 years ago. Honda attempted to rebel against the group members, but Hirama has come to the professor, not seeking revenge, but with the intention of protecting his country. Up in space, 39 days have now passed, and they are about to land on Mars. Akari and Marcos are waiting outside the shower room because the girl has been taking a bath inside for a long time. So they peek into the door, but the girl stares back at them. Suddenly, a terraformer came out that was holding a lifeless girl. The two were attacked, and Akari realizes that he is able to dodge its attacks. He then ordered Marcos to run to the storeroom while he faced this monster. After Marcos left, the vice captain, Michelle, suddenly arrived and ordered Akari to follow Marcos and find the drugs. The drugs are required to activate their abilities after the surgery. Meanwhile, in the field, there were also terraformers, and they had nothing to do but watch while their companions were mercilessly killed by them. 
and then a man arrived with a gun, but it did not scratch the hard skin of the terraformers. It then slowly approached, removed his head, and used it to kill his comrades. As Marcos and Alex reach the storeroom, they are shocked to see two terraformers destroying the drugs. Marcos and Akari realize that the terraformers are intelligent and know that they need to destroy the drugs before humans can use them. The monsters continue to haunt the humans inside the spaceship, and many of them die without a fight. Captain Kamachi contacted the UNASA on Earth because he wanted them to return to Earth, bringing the six terraformers inside the spaceship as samples. But his superior declined his request. He told them that it was obvious that someone had planned this. Just then, with a big explosion, the ship breaks down and falls towards Mars. The other top-ranking officers came to rescue Michelle, but they were told to separate so they could rescue their comrades. Captain Kamachi came to Akari and Marcos and said he's the one who will take care of the monster. Captain Kamachi announced the spaceship's engine is not working and is falling toward Mars. Because of this, he ordered all the personnel to head to escape ships. The six officers take out drugs and inject themselves with them. They receive immense strength from it, and they begin their attack on terraformers, killing every terraformer on board. All the other crew members are amazed at the power it can give the drugs. After the battle, they had a discussion about how they would land on Mars using the escape vessels because their spaceship's engine was damaged. Because of this, they were divided into six groups, led by six executive officers on each escape ship. Captain Kamachi is leading the Japanese and American 1st Division. Michelle will lead the Japanese and American 2nd Division. Asanov will lead the Russia 3rd Division. Liu will lead the China 4th Division. Adolf will lead the Germany 5th Division and Joseph will lead the Europe and Africa 6th Division. Before their escape plan, they wish each other good luck and meet each other again to surface. They started the escape plan using their escape ship in different directions. The Division 2 safely landed on Mars, led by Vice Captain Michel. After they scanned the area, they left the escape ship, and they found that the planet Mars is almost identical to Earth, compared to when it was only in the 28th century, when there was no life on this planet. The team members can breathe with ease because of the surgery they went through. Meanwhile, Division 1, led by Captain Kamachi, also landed safely, but he is worried that there is a shortage of drugs because it was destroyed by Terraformer. On the other hand, Division 6, led by Joseph, did not land until they were suddenly caught by a huge net, which became the reason for the rapid crash of their vehicle. They realized it was the work of the Terraformers. The ship is swarmed by them, waiting for them to get off the ship. The Russian division has already landed safely in front of the pyramids. Suddenly, a cockroach appeared from nowhere. <laughs> Asimov ordered them not to use any medicine to save them later because their enemy is just a one cockroach, and instead they will just use weapons to catch it alive. The cockroach immediately responded to Elena, so Ivan was worried, but Asamov said that Elena is a veteran at using guns, so they should just trust each other. But in an instant, the cockroach moved very quickly, and Elena lost her life. Meanwhile, Division 1 is preparing to go out of their ship, and Kamachi said that within 40 days, their rescue from Earth will arrive. But while they are on Mars, they have a mission. First, they will find the main spaceship where it crashed and recover samples of the Mars virus, and second, they need to survive. Their division will regroup with Michelle's group and take over the main ship again. Suddenly, they are attacked by one of the terraformers from Sheila's side, so Captain Kamachi drives the ship away. The captain takes Marcos and another man named Keiji out with him to fight it and capture it alive for a virus sample. They are ordered to take the drug, but as they are about to take in the drug, the terraformer runs in the opposite direction. Suddenly another cockroach came on top of their ship to completely remove the glass. When the monster entered, it was used by Sheila's cannon and the net that came from the weapon, which was made of very strong materials that the monsters could not destroy. Captain Kamachi praised her courage to save everyone, but suddenly the terraformer raised its hands and shot Sheila with the holes in the hand. Captain Kamachi was very surprised because he knew that this kind of ability was like one of his companions before the first mission to Mars. Because of the anger, Marcos smashed the head of the cockroach. In Sheila's last breath, she wanted to tell Captain Kamichi how she felt about him, but she couldn't. 
She took her last breath on Captain Kamach's lap while he hugged her. Meanwhile, in Division 3, Asimov also learns that the super-fast movement that the cockroach made to kill Elena was also the original ability of a crew on the first mission to Mars. Now all divisions are surrounded by many terraformers, so they are all ready for a fierce battle and to take drugs to activate their abilities. The strength, speed, and sensory abilities of the huntsman spider that regularly feeds on cockroaches. Marcos uses this superior power, and with the rage of losing his childhood friend Sheila, he goes berserk and kills them. Back in the past, Sheila, Marcos, and Alex used to live in a very violent Mexican neighborhood. Marcos keeps beating the terraformers, but his stamina is limited. The huntsman spider is notorious for having low stamina, which is why Captain Kamachi saved him. In addition to Kamachi, they say they will finish off all the cockroach, and if any are still breathing after, they will capture them. Meanwhile, Michelle is also ready for the fierce battle, and she quickly defeated the cockroach using her strength from the Paraponra ant, which can lift hundreds of times its own weight. Apparently, she inherited it from her father, who was on the bugs two missions twenty years ago. Her ant ability comes from the surgery that can blow up a cockroach, which is why she has no mercy for the pesky cockroaches around her. There were three more approaching their ship, so Akari wanted to face them alone. Akari fights the cockroach, but he doesn't want to destroy it because their mission is to bring living samples to Earth. He caught one, and using the cables, he also caught the second one, and due to his strategy and skill in fighting, he also caught the third one. They were successful in hiding the cockroach to make a sample. Later in the river, they learn that the water is the same as the earth, and Michelle wants to clean herself because of the blood that is spread on her clothes. Suddenly, there was a strong cockroach that came from above, landed on their ship, and surprised everyone, and there was another one that came from underwater and grabbed Michelle before she could use the drug. Akari didn't reach her before she was completely grabbed underwater by the terraformers. At the top of their escape ship, Alex saw a strange-looking leg by the cockroach, and he used his medicine. The monster quickly attacked Alex, but in the second attempt, he was hit, sending him flying off the ship. Then the cockroach removed the cover of the ship using his extremely powerful legs. The terraformer hijacks the ship with the humans still inside. Once in the skies, it turns to them. Because of this, Alex used the ability to throw a rock as hard as he could with the strings of Akari, which he used to climb up into the sky to get to the ship. Akari is ranked 6th among all the crews sent to Mars, and his power is like an insect called Yumeta japonica that can be found in Japan, and this insect has a very strong web. After that, Hisamero used the emergency ejector of their ship so he could fight with nothing to worry about. He commented on the cockroach, saying that he never skips a leg day. Meanwhile, Michelle is still being taken to a deeper part of the sea with a terraformer that has adapted to underwater living. Two years ago, Michelle sneaked into UNASA to look at the team from the Bugs 2 mission 20 years ago. Everyone on that team was mutated with unique insect abilities. Both she and Akari realized that some of these terraformers have special abilities because they used the corpses of people who died back then. The super-legged enemy breaks free, and he starts beating up Akari. But Alex cannot help him, as he has to save the crew members using Akari's strings. In the water, Michelle was able to get rid of the monster using her strength, and she immediately broke the arm, then swam back to the surface. However, she is immediately chased and planned again to be brought to the deep part of the sea to drown it. She cannot explode this enemy because its body temperature is too low. Michelle came up with a strategy to pretend to be unconscious, holding his breath while she was slowly crushing the monster's legs with her strength and the pressure of the water. Back in the skies, the terraformer beats up Akari and starts working on the plane. But when Akari woke up, the cockroach was surprised and immediately attacked him. However, the cockroach could no longer move due to the string, and it kicked him in the face very hard. Akari then fell down because of the bruise he received, but the cockroach was still trying to get up. Akari apparently attached his string to Michelle, so she gets pulled out of the water by the plane. Akari stopped their ship while the monster was still trying to get up. But suddenly, a part of the machine hit him in the face, and because of this, he fell into the air and was forced to use his wing. Now it's Alex's job to finish this cockroach by using his powerful throw and hitting the leg of the cockroach. After that, Akari received an SOS signal from other divisions, but Akari is not sure which divisions. 
Meanwhile, in Division 3, they are surrounded by many terraformers, so they are preparing for a fierce battle. When Michelle woke up, she wondered how she got out of the water, and when she saw the cockroach, she immediately killed it. The cockroach that Akari was fighting fell, and when Michelle saw the string, she got worried. Then, all of a sudden, Akari also fell from above. He was happy to see that their vice captain was saved. Then he wanted to fight the monster alone, but Michelle didn't allow him. Akari and Michelle worked together to capture the special terraformers. Akari told Michelle that they received an SOS signal from Division 1 and Division 6, and they are still lucky because the ship's power and radio are still working, but they can't fly it anymore and they still need to fix the tires. Michelle asked them to change the tires of the car while she was changing clothes at the back of a rock, which is why the two fools thought of something stupid. Meanwhile, while Asimov was still talking, a monster immediately attacked him, so he got angry, punched the monster using his abilities, and was thrown to the ground. Asimov has power rank 3 among the crews sent to Mars, and his power is like that of a Tasmanian king crab with a hard shell that can grow legs. The terraformers fought against the hybrid humans, and a woman with a power like a scorpion pierced the eyes of a cockroach. The man with the power of beetle easily defeated his opponent's cockroach. Meanwhile, Asimov is being punched, but his shell is really hard, and he is immune to every punch. Then he kills all of them with ease. Asimov also saw that Ivan had been slain, so he got angry, but he also died from the cockroaches slaying. However, this is just an illusion, one of the abilities of Ivan. Asimov then continued killing the cockroach with ease, but one of the cockroaches ran away from them. But Ivan stopped it and knocked it down with one blow. He then used the gun to capture the cockroaches for a sample, and now they plan to enter the pyramid. Somewhere else, it started raining, and we saw some units burn, and one of them was wearing a tag with the name Louis, the leader of the 4th Division. Mitchell and Adolf talk about how they need to get back to the crash site before the Chinese and Russians do. After Adolf talked to Michelle, they immediately left and went to their crashed spaceship. Before Division 5 could fly, they were slammed by another escape ship. Because of this, they crashed into a cliff where there were a lot of terraformers, and they were even attacked by them using a missile. They saw that the escape ship of Division 4 was being stolen by cockroaches, so they want to get it back. Adolf and another girl named Isabella enter the fight. Adolf has the electric power of the electric eel. He uses his knives to attack his enemies with electricity. Even in his past, he was hit with loads of electric shocks to give him this power. Adolf starts thinking about his messed up life. He believed that his life had been a waste until he met Rosa and fell in love at first sight. Adolf and Rosa started connecting, and he found new meaning in his hell of a life. They started dating, and it was a fairly happy life for Rosa and Adolf. Eventually, they got married. Nevertheless, since everyone in this story has a terrible story to tell, the story ends tragically. Apparently, Rosa had an affair. However, Adolf loves her a lot, and he forgives her. Eventually, they have a baby. But Adolf has his DNA tested, and it turns out it does not belong to him. In the present, Isabella has already transformed, and her power is like a cricket. She has a lot of hype about how powerful she herself is, until she's one shot by a special terraformer. Now, Adolf is the only remaining skilled fighter. He shot the terraformers one by one in the chest using his weapon, and they were hit at the same time. Later on, an escape truck arrived, and what looked like a boss cockroach was also in control, and the white flag was raised. After a long battle, Adolf gets tired and starts thinking about his unfortunate life, while many of the cockroaches are approaching him. They are just about to kill him, but his crew members come out in their hybrid forms, and they try to fight back, but they are easily dominated. Using the distraction, Eva grabs Adolf and tries to take him back. However, one of the terraformers was heading towards them. Eva didn't know what to do, but they were saved by their companions, even though they knew the terrifying power of the terraformers. The monsters are really smart because they also use their net cannon weapons to catch them and experiment with them, so Eva is the only one left, and their captain has lost consciousness. Eva looked at the captain and saw that his heart was no longer beating, so the poor girl lost hope. But later, Captain Adolf's body suddenly released electricity and came back to life. While his crew members watch in shock, he consumes a terrible amount of drugs, so much that he might end up dying. 
He beats the everlasting crap out of the terraformers with his supreme powers and fighting skills, eventually killing half of the entire freaking army without any trouble. Because Adolf has ranked two power in all of the crews sent to Mars. He throws his knives at the leader, and they stop them with a flag. But this was all according to plan. The knives work as rods. Adol flips his middle finger at them and brings down an entire lightning strike on the leader. The flag gets destroyed, and the leader falls, defeated. However, Adolf also falls down after losing all his strength. Thankfully, the remaining terraformers stop moving, and they stare at the cliff where their leader is lying down. Suddenly, a terraformer comes walking near the leader and starts stamping on the leader's heart. The terraformer repeatedly hit it until the ugly monster regained consciousness. Then Leader Cockroach ordered his soldiers to shoot Adolf and Eva. All the terraformers point their guns at them while also taking the captured humans into their nets. The captain of Division 5 was surprised when Eva blocked him until they were showered with bullets. At the last moment, Adolf used his power to create a force field where countless bullets could not penetrate. This man just refuses to die and wants to save his comrade and make a vaccine. After running out of ammunition, some of them kneel down to prepare another attack using a slingshot. At the gesture of their leader, they release the same time their stone towards Eva and Adolf. Before they hit, Adolf hugs Eva to protect her from the attack. It was hard to watch because his body was completely destroyed by stones. The leader stopped them when he saw that Adolf's body was already torn, and Adolf dropped dead in front of Eva. While Eva is mourning over him, the leader jumps down for her. Eva starts punching it like a little girl. The leader ordered one of his soldiers to analyze Adolf's body so that they could take his power. However, a tickling sound starts from Adolf's body. It turns out that Adolf's body had been fixed with a self-destructive device by the scientists who experimented on him. All the terraformers run away like little kids. Instead of running away, Eva holds his head. All the other crew members are also happy to die alongside their commander, as they have had a very strong bond all their lives, long before they came to Mars. The explosion is huge, and it was spotted by Michelle's division. Based on the direction of the explosion, Michelle guesses that Adolf is dead. Back on Earth, Rosa tries to claim Adolf's salary, but she is rejected, telling her that there is no one with that name here. Elsewhere, Captain Kamach's division is having a hard time because they have been separated. Marcos is also an opponent of the slingshot user, and is having a hard time with so many stones until he hits his face. Kanoko suddenly arrived with a rank of 15 and used his ability to fly very fast, like a white-throated needletail. No terraformer can match her speed as she slices and dices her way through their army. Meanwhile, at the bottom of the cliff, Captain Kamachi and Keiji are preparing to face the special type terraformers. Keiji, who was once a boxing champion with a rank 8 in the crew and a power similar to that of a mantis shrimp, will face a terraformer with a power similar to that of the toughest beetles in the world. But we also know that the mantis shrimp is known for breaking hard shells using the powerful power of its hands. Keiji is a simple man with a simple way of living. He loves his mother very much, and he's a good son to her. One day, he suddenly started losing his sight. He has a retinal detachment, which he fixes through surgery. The surgery costs a lot, so he goes into debt. He was forced to give up boxing since his vision never returned to normal. Keiji then begins working as a regular mailman. The hardest part was that his mother also died. One day, he receives a letter from UNASA on the Annex mission to Mars. Keiji accepted it on the condition that he get the bug with the best vision so that he can return and see the town where his mother was born and raised. The beetle cockroach attacked him with a high-speed punch, but the world champion boxer avoided all its attacks and managed to put some cracks in its armor. The two continued their intense fight, and Keiji showed his skills as a good boxer, but the cockroach still refused to give up and continued to punch until he hit Keiji, sending him flying to the wall. But Keiji seriously has the power of friendship with him, and he gets up. The problem is that Keiji cannot use his left hand, and his one eye was also affected by the impact. Keiji was able to avoid the first kick, but suddenly he tripped over the rope and was hit by a strong kick. Keiji still gets up thinking about all these new friends who are just so happy to be with him. He refused to give up and punched the beetle cockroach with all his might, sending the opponent to the wall and destroying his chest. 
Meanwhile, Captain Kamachi, who has the power of a hornet, is facing a very strong hybrid cockroach that uses strings, but the captain is better at fighting so the enemy flies. But it suddenly threw something into the sky, but Captain Kamachi ignored it, and he wondered why the cockroach didn't run away since he had no hope of winning. Suddenly, the cockroach attacked by wrapping the string all over his body. And just as the cockroach was about to punch the captain, a weapon shot out of his arm and pierced him instead. The captain gave it several savage blows until the cockroach fell to the ground and lay down. Meanwhile, the Russian team investigates the pyramids, but Asanov is suspicious because no one has come to stop them or guarding the place. Later on, they saw a small spaceship, and Asimov explained that 100 years ago, it was the first probe to check up on Mars, but it went missing. Asimov is telling them the cockroaches found something much earlier, and an even more powerful tool to fight. Elsewhere, Captain Kamachi and KG see a strange device flying across the sky. Accordingly, the fighting tool that the terraformer obtained was the fuel system that was to be used to go back to Earth. The humans are not struck by the missiles, but their drugs start losing effect. Suddenly, one of the members of Division 1 named Jared got cut off his leg by a gold cockroach. The cockroach came out from under the ground because it's part of a strategy to prevent humans from running away, so one of them was cornered and burned by a very hot fire. Marcos was surrounded by cockroaches, and he has no more powers because the effects of the medicine are gone. Now he just likes to pray to them. Meanwhile, Captain Asimov finds more in the pyramid, a blueprint for spaceships and mutations. At the same time, Captain Kamachi realizes that one of their divisions has betrayed them and given the terraformers crucial information. The terraformers are just about to kill a helpless Marcos, but Alex throws his baseball with supreme force. Alex throws lots of rocks, killing lots of terraformers, but he also sends the drug along with it. While Marcos notices it, consumes it, and gets back his insect powers. Now the two combination combos are throwing rock and Marcos hitting the rock, killing the terraformers. Meanwhile, Jared sees the special terraformer with SH and Ing armor heading to save the terraformers that have been captured. The rest of Division 2 arrive to aid Marcos and his other team, but another one of the missiles starts dropping, but Alex throws a rock and destroys it. After aiding Division 1, Michelle is now confronting the golden terraformer, while Akari will face a powerful hybrid cockroach like a mole cricket. The mole cricket threw the ball, and Akari's string was caught immediately, and the cockroach flew away. Michelle used the string to kick away the flying cockroach, and this cockroach has power like a rainbow stag beetle that has a hard shell and can camouflage so they can't see it anymore. Jared suggests to use his power to find the invisible cockroach, so Michelle gave him medicine. Jared used echolocation, like a killer whale or dolphin, to find the invisible cockroach that was already above him. Vice Captain Michelle immediately kicked terraformers in the face, but the stag beetle cockroach headbutted her quickly and hugged him tightly, destroying Michelle's armor. Michelle suddenly released some body heat, causing her to blow up the invisible cockroach. Marcos continued to fight, and Alex came to help him, and when he saw his friend, he apologized to Marcos because he could not protect Sheila, who had died. Alex punches him because it's not the right time to apologize because there are a lot of terraformers around. And Captain Kamachi and Keiji arrive, so the four team up to fight the many cockroaches. Meanwhile, Joseph, leader of the 6th Division, was alone, surrounded by many terraformers. Akari's colleagues noticed that he was becoming like a raging animal in his fighting style, but Captain Kamachi and Michelle stopped him, and Akari went back to himself. They see that the hybrid cockroach has escaped, but Akari's leash is already inside it, and as it crawls deeper into the ground, Akari's net sticks to it, preventing it from crawling underground. They used medicine again for their strength and full courage to face the terraformers. Marcos showed his amazing ability to use the Chaco and KG power punch to kill the cockroach. Akari also took advantage of his experience in fighting, and Kanoko also showed his unparalleled speed in defeating terraformers. Alex was throwing balls at the monsters, and Michelle also showed the explosive power of the power she got from the surgery. Captain Kamachi showed off his power with a powerful blow and went berserk in a fierce battle. Even though there are many smart opponents, our heroes will not give up their lives for the sake of saving the whole Earth so that their mission to get samples to solve the alien virus will be successful. Countless cockroaches emerge from them toward our heroes, but Akari is not concerned that they will succeed in their mission to save the Earth. 
back on Earth, the Prime Minister of Japan, Hiruma, who is also the second survivor of the Bugs 2 mission alongside Captain Kamachi, talks with President Goodman, the American president. President Goodman reveals that the rescue ship hasn't even left Earth, much to Hiruma's shock. After the meeting, Hiruma promised that he would not abandon his comrade, not in the greatest time of need. He vows to do everything in his power to bring them home, no matter what. Meanwhile, Captain Liu of Division 4 is still alive with his whole team, which seems to be planning something bad. We also see a spaceship that seems to be going towards Earth. In the year 2020, humans sent cockroaches along with moss to Mars as part of an experiment to inhabit the planet. But after 600 years, the cockroaches evolved into a terrifying creature called Terraform Mars and a disease called the Alien Engine Virus, which originated on Mars and has a 100% fatality rate in humans currently plaguing Earth. In order to cut off this nightmare, a crew whose human body was strengthened by special surgery was sent out to Mars. Before they were able to land on Mars, they were invaded by many terraformers, so they split up to ride on escape vessels. The warriors fight hard while fighting against various pastes, including the protagonists, Akari Hizamaru and Michelle K. Davis. Captain Kamachi contacted the companions to see if they were in good condition, so Division 2 and Division 1 reported that they were safe, but they were also surrounded by terraformers. The Division 1 vehicles were entered by Terraform Mars, and they were able to defend themselves by using guns. Meanwhile, Michelle reports to Captain Kamachi that Akari and herself have both taken their medicine because they need it. The two don't want to let the cockroaches get in their way, but even though Akari is within his limitations, he still continues to fight. Michelle notices that Akari is getting weak when suddenly a cockroach flies up to her and grabs her up, and while in the air, he is punched by cockroaches. Meanwhile, in Division 2, they used a wall shield, but Yeko was left outside alone with the cockroaches. Akari is still being carried by the terraformers until dawn and suddenly he is getting pushed down to the ground by these things very quickly. But Alex uses his baseball skills to save him, so Akari's impact on the ground has been reduced, but Akari's mutant drug runs out. In Division 2, Alex saved Yeko from the terraformers, but he was very weak afterwards, and another woman was cornered by terraformers in Division 1. It's good that Captain Kamachi returned to their spaceship and saved them. Meanwhile, Michelle rushes to Akari's location because she knows his medicine is running out. Akari woke up from his fall and saw that there was a cockroach waiting for him. Akari remembers the boy struggling with the alien virus and his childhood friend who died with the virus. He used his mutant powers without the drug. It was only necessary for him to stabilize his mental state. All of his companions were surprised to see the bright light. Akari's look changed as he charged forward toward the hybrid cockroach, trying to fight one-on-one. -on -one. Akari's companions have arrived to support him as he continues to hit the hard body of the hybrid cockroach, even though it wasn't really hurt, so he just kicked its head. But after that, Akari fell down, and Michelle came to hold him. Once they beat the rest of the enemies, Akari is put to rest while the others regroup. Captain Kamachi and Michelle were planning to go to their main ship to meet other divisions. They said they would reach it in a week because their escape vessels couldn't fly anymore. Michelle tells Captain Kamachi that Adolf's division is probably annihilated. They continue journeying to go to their main ship to meet other divisions. As they travel, Captain Kamachi wonders why there have been no terraformers attacking them in the past six days. Michelle suddenly kicks Kamachi because he wants to train them, while Akari trains himself alone. Meanwhile, on Earth, there is also tension between the executives of their own countries, because, until now, the executive of Division 1 has not been able to send a rescue ship. According to the Division 4 executive, the Division 1 executive intends not to send a rescue, because it wants to test the true power of mosaic organ surgery. Because of this, Division 4 executives decided that they would be the only ones in charge of the rescue mission, and have already sent a rescue ship armed with tactical weapons. However, despite everyone's knowledge, what they sent was a battleship for Division 4, and not the rescue ship because they had a different plan. Back on Mars, Division 3 is still inside the pyramid, and they saw here the information about all the crew and spaceships that they used in the mission, which surprised everyone. Michelle and Captain Kamachi were suspicious of the burnt bodies of the entire Division 4, because terraformers are interested in the bodies of human hybrids and do not leave the burnt bodies on the ground. Captain Kamachi does not want to believe it, but there was a traitor division. 
Meanwhile, Division 4 is still alive, and they are in the main spaceship, and they have already placed mine bombs around it to blow up any division that goes there. They were surrounded by many terraformers, so they were forced to use the anti-terraformer cannon, which will only target things that move due to the motion sensor, so they are not allowed to move when it is activated. Captain Kamachi has spotted Annex 1, but they are forced to stop because they saw a radio tower there. And through Jared's powerful echolocation, there are people in front of Annex 1, and they also learned that there are mines around the spaceship. Captain Kamachi immediately ordered Erika to call the Earth. When Liu-san finds out that Captain Kamachi is already there, they activate the radio tower to block communication from Earth. Because of this, Liu-san called Kamachi's group and revealed they were the ones who brought the six terraformers on board before they even arrived on Mars. Liu-san also warns them that if they don't surrender Akari and Michelle, they will blow up their ship with a powerful missile. Liu-san wants the that two is how of them the video to guinea pigs if because you want of their me to unique continue abilities. This anime, let me know the two by are on their way down below. But Captain Kamachi Thank stopped you for them watching because if they leave the vehicle, time. Liu San will definitely blow them up. Just then, some terraformers arrived that had slingshots, so Leo activated the shield of the spaceship against their rocks. According to Liu San, there is no chance that they will be hit by any weapon because of the very high technology of their equipment. However, with the help of KG's clear eyes, Alex suddenly destroyed their apparatus, so the shield was gone for a moment. Then Kanoko used lightning speed to bring Captain Kamachi there before the shield came back. The enemies were surprised to suddenly see Captain Kamachi, and they told them that their traitorous act had exposed the rest of the crew to mortal danger. The Chinese division had begun attacking Captain Kamachi, and Jet punched him with his power like an impulse, sending him flying. Alex threw the ball again, but it was absorbed by the opponent's machine, and this is when Captain Kamachi rushed at them and punched them one by one until he was close to Captain Liu San. Then they go face to face with each other. Using the power of the giant hornet, Captain Kamachi managed to put a huge spike on Liu's body and face. Thank you for watching Captain till the Liu end, Sen didn't and please don't it. forget to he subscribe. He just thought that Captain Kamachi See you next was time, an amateur. And peace out. The SO's message was received by Division 3 under the leadership of Captain Asimov, and because of their plan to further strengthen their alliance with other countries, they will go to the one who sent the message that they are Captain Kamachi, and there is another mission that Asimov will ask Alexander to do. Meanwhile, Captain Kamachi tells everyone that he has injected a painful venom into Liu-san's body. Kamachi was surprised to learn that Liu-san was still in good condition, and Liu-san ordered his companions to shoot Kamachi's legs. Then, he uses the mutant drug inside his body to transform into the blue-ringed octopus, which can heal itself rapidly. As a venom, just a single octopus can kill seven humans, but can also be used as a painkiller. He tells his crew that he wants Captain Kamachi's wound tended to, and they will keep him as a hostage. However, Captain Kamachi tells him he has no worth as a hostage. They found out that Captain Kamachi companions had already escaped, but they didn't know who was inside the ship. Captain Kamachi revealed that Michelle and Akari are the only ones piloting Unit 1 and Unit 2. They're not coming back, no matter how much they broadcast Kamachi's screams. Suddenly, they blast him with the anti-terraformer cannon, leaving the captain laying on the ground. But they realized that the only targets for the cannon should be the ones moving because of its motion sensor. Suddenly, there was a gust of wind that caught their attention, and they also found out that it was just an illusion that they were seeing. The gas belongs to the Russian Ivan. Using the advantage of this, they save Captain Kamachi with the help of a companion with the power of a mountain mole, Sergei, ranking number 11. Division 3 sacrificed their vehicle to destroy the enemy's laser shield to gain entry. Now the Russians are turning their backs on the Chinese because of how the Chinese have betrayed everyone. Asimov's shell is so strong that it has the power of Tasmanian giant crab, so he can't be hit by a bullet. He declares that the Russian Federation Space Army is proud allies of us Japanese forces. Meanwhile, Michelle and Akari are planning to meet and ask Joseph, the captain of Division 6, for help, who is busy killing the terraformers. Back to Annex 1, the two captains face each other, and Asimov noticed that Liu San lied about his power, which he said was an anaconda, but it was actually a blue-ringed octopus. Asimov is angry at Liu San for teaching the terraformers so much about humanity. Using the machine they have, bullets rain down on Asimov, but due to his strength and endurance, he was still able to advance towards the machine and throw it. 
The Chinese division was surprised and amazed by Captain Asanov's strength. Meanwhile, Alexander sneaks into the annex ship. Down on Earth, Himura revealed that his country has secured Professor Honda. In the process, he reveals that Honda was the one who created Akari. This information shocked everyone because they knew Honda was killed 20 years ago. Back on Mars, Asimov and Liusen have one-on-one -on -one combat, and in the middle of their exchange of attacks, Asimov's gas mask is removed. Even the crews on both sides are already fighting, and Liu Sun thought he would just wait for the poison to get into Asimov's body because he no longer has a gas mask on. Liu San doesn't expect Asimov to fight well, putting himself in danger, so he spits black ink on Asimov's face, but he was saved by the bubbles. Asimov tried to slam on the ground, but he couldn't do it because his body slipped, and the Russian captain was hit. At the same time, his crew was at a disadvantage until they received a heavy blow. Captain Liu San told them the only reason they didn't surrender was because they could win without their alliance. Despite his damage, Captain Asimov stands still and tells them it was they who betrayed humanity, not them. Captain Asimov started to attack again, but Liu San was able to dodge, and he wrapped his hands around him and released a strong poison gas. However, Asimov suddenly cuts off both of their limbs and slams him into the ground to try to cut the torso in half. Asimov's two crew members have also recovered to protect their captain. Suddenly, Alexander arrived on board a missile launcher that he found hidden inside the spaceship. He makes a threat to use the missiles to shoot down the communication jamming tower. If that happens, every division will have the ability to communicate with Earth and inform them of the Chinese's betrayal. A crew member named Chun-Li from the Chinese division suddenly approached him, and she started stripping. Then he suddenly appeared behind Alexander and almost killed him. Then suddenly, a strange light came and hit them. Everyone wondered where it came from, and then they noticed that the sky had darkened. Upon closer inspection, they turned out to be countless terraformers. Aaron heard that the terraformers were laughing at them for killing each other, even though they are the same species. The terraformers' leaders also showed up and looked like Dragonfly. Jet tried to take down the Dragonfly terraformer, but it moved too fast and dodged all his attacks. Then Dragonfly terraformer moves toward Nina, but Aaron blocks it. In the process, only he is taken. The Russians and the Chinese work together to fight it, but it is too fast. It gathers all the bodies of the dead humans and sends them to the others for experimentation. Then they dropped the young cockroaches that were holding the knife. Inside the spaceship, a very innocent girl named Hong was surprised to see the terraformers inside. Captain Liu San and Captain Asimov were surrounded by Kid's terraformer and realized the dragonfly terraformer was training them how to fight, and they started dominating the humans. Meanwhile, Nina, who had already been knocked out by them, just then, Kanako appeared and cut the terraformers who were holding Nina. Ivan also comes with her. Even though this is not the plan, his mission is to keep the wounded safe. The little terraformers saw him, but he immediately put them to sleep using his power. The Russian division killed the enemy one by one and went inside the annex ship. Meanwhile, despite Kanako's great speed, the dragonfly terraformer are still able to keep up with him. The other terraformer also followed him, so he took out his blade and cut everything in his path. Kanako manages to escape and wonders why he isn't chased by the terraformers anymore. All of a sudden, it returned to the annex ship, where the cockroaches are now gathering. The girl earlier, Hong, appeared on top of the annex ship, and the terraformers started dropping. Meanwhile, Asimov saw the Chinese wear full body armor. He realized Hong's power was a bacteria, so they needed to get away from here immediately. They started running, but Alexander was still standing and looked like he was planning something. The Chinese division sent a rocket missile to Asinov, but with the help of Anastasia, she blocked it. And they managed to escape under the ground of Sergei, a mountain mole. Alexander chose to be left behind to finish off Hong for the sake of his wife, who has an alien engine virus, because he wanted his companions to succeed in making a vaccine. Liu San puts on a suit and mask so that they won't die from Hong's bacteria, and they didn't realize that one of them was a trap that exploded, but they found out that Alexander, who did this, was the only one who was ready to die just to defeat them. Let's look back at when Alexander had hair. He fell in love with a girl named Gina. Despite being rejected so many times, Alexander kept pushing her. She says that her father would not allow it. So, Alexander asks to meet her father, and her father is the scary General Asimov. 
In their first meeting ever with Asimov, he punches him out of the house. Every time he came home, he was always punched in the face, and Gina always cut his hair down to look respectable until he became bald. Gina gets angry, so she and her mother beat up Asimov and demand that he give Alexander a chance. Soon after, Alexander and Gina get married. Gina gets pregnant, but one day she gets infected with the alien virus. This is the reason why Asimov and him took the risk of going to Mars to make vaccines. Back to the present, Alexander killed each bodyguard one by one until he finally cornered Hong in an empty room. He hesitates because it's only a child, but he loves his wife too much and will do anything to save them. Then suddenly, the Chinese came to save her, blocking his blade. Burke took off his mask only to find Alexander, even if it cost him inhaling the bacteria. Chun-Li used her invincible power to beat up Alexander until she threw him against the wall. But Alexander was willing to save his wife and create a vaccine. He injects four doses of the drugs and grabs Chun-Li by the neck, but Hong grabs him and begs him not to kill Chun-Li. Jet revealed that Alexander was already dead. Captain Liu Sen takes time to appreciate Alexander's resolve and warrior spirit. The battle that cannot be given begins between those who abandoned their lives after returning to Earth and those who want to protect them even if they are dead. Later on, Liu Sen contacts Akari and Michelle to force them to surrender, or else they will be hit by a missile. Akari is pissed off about this, but Michelle is just relaxed because they have more important things to do. In the middle of the journey, their ship suddenly stops, and they discover it is a hybrid terraformer lifted with only one hand. And at a glance, Michelle realized that the hybrid terraformers have the same powers as her father, just like a paraponra ant that has a lot of power. Elsewhere, on the escape vessel of Division 3, Captain Kamachi wakes up, and Captain Asimov asks for forgiveness for the ridiculous moves he made, but Captain Kamachi still thanked him for saving his life. Asimov is still angry because of Alexander's suicide mission, so no matter what happens, he has to succeed in developing a vaccine against the alien engine virus. Then, Asimov quickly goes over everything that happened and the specifics of the capabilities of the Chinese division with him, especially with the humanoid bioweapon. Kamachi said that they need to find Akari and Michelle before Division 4. And aside from Division 4, the terraformers also wanted to kidnap the two. Meanwhile, Akari used his cables for the hybrid cockroach, but he was still able to move it using his overwhelming strength. Michelle pushed their vehicle, and Akari pushed the other, so the two cars spun around while the cables were wrapped around the hybrid cockroach's body. Michelle responded by punching the hybrid cockroach's body hard and repeatedly, and Akari felt Michelle's strong punches in his cables. Michelle rushed to finish the terraformer, but the terraformer knocked her away with a flick on Michelle's forehead, and she disappeared far away. Akari saw that the body of the terraformer was already cracked by Michelle's punches, but it was moving again, so Akari covered it with cables. Akari was surprised when his cables melted, and it was because of another hybrid terraformer behind him. Now he is in danger between the two, and suddenly Michelle appears furious. She quickly tries to use her explosive gas on it, but the hybrid terraformer sucks in the explosive gas. The two terraformers talk, and then he throws his partner to separate Akari and Michelle, who are no match for their abilities. The acid terraformer starts using a strange martial arts technique to attack him. Akari, being a karate specialist, manages to fight back, breaking the terraformer's arm. Shockingly, the terraformer pulled out his gun and fired at him, willing to do what it takes to win. With lots of bullets in his body, Akari collapses. When Yeko saw that Akari was already defeated, he asked for help from the Chinese division, because when Akari and Michelle died, she would be the next to be killed by the terraformers. Liu San doesn't want the terraformers to get their bodies, so they send a missile to the exact location where Akari and Michelle are, but Liu San doesn't know that it is also included in their plan. Alex is waiting for the missile because he will destroy it, and its smoke will serve as a signal for Captain Joseph. When Akari felt the missile, he grabbed it with a cable, and Alex didn't hit it. So the missile went straight to their ship, but it didn't explode there, and you can see that the bullets didn't hit Akari's body. They were about to launch the second missile, but Liu San wonders why the first missile didn't explode. It was discovered that Alexander removed the powder from the missiles and put something else. It was a special weapon that Alexander sacrificed himself to give it to Akari. The anti-terraformer Vibro Ninja Blade is known as Hizamaru. 
It's now a proper showdown between him and the Acid Terraformer. Acid Terraformer starts using his own club to throw powerful streams of rocks at him. When the Acid Terraformer saw that Akari was getting weaker, he thought this was his chance to kill him. But Akari suddenly moved so fast that he split the Acid Terraformer, and Akari was also getting weaker, but he still wanted to help Michelle. Meanwhile, Michelle is getting beat up by the hybrid terraformer. She also has a flashback. Her school once collapsed when she was a little child. She was the only one who survived unharmed, while her friends sustained horrific injuries. Michelle hated her father for going missing, but she discovered her father was a hero after looking through the data Kamachi provided her. Her powers are a memory of her father. Using her father's memories as motivation, Michelle woke up. She was very angry at the hybrid terraformer, so she used the accelerator on her arm to hit the face of the terraformer very hard. Michelle also used her accelerator on her back and feet because she wanted to make the hybrid terraformer cry. Unfortunately, the terraformer hybrid used the broken leg to kick Michelle in the stomach, causing her to fall, but she still tried to stand up. The terraformer hybrid wants to finish her, but Alex arrives just in time to break the weapon. Then Michelle punched the cockroach, but her bones also started getting cracked while she was trying to put down the terraformer. Michelle even pinched its head, and using the accelerator, she put the terraformer's face on the ground. But the terraformer is still standing, and Michelle has already accepted that she will be dying. Suddenly, Akari's cables and swords arrive to save her. Akari can no longer stand, but using his cables, he is able to move until the hybrid terraformer finally dies. While lying down, Akari remembers that Michelle's birthday is today. But Michelle reminds him that they need to find Division 6's leader, Joseph. While they can still move, they wonder why Alex and Yiko are not here yet, and they are surprised to see the Chinese division arrive to take them. Earlier, Jilin shot Alex in the leg before going to capture Akari and Michelle. Then Jilin uses his net to capture the two of them, and he starts taking them back to the Annex ship. They also plan to get the 200 terraformer samples that were captured by the US Japanese division. Jilin also wants to know where the other crew members of divisions 1 and 2 are, but Akari lies that they are all dead, Jilin doesn't believe it and shoots his ear. Jilin reports to Captain Liu Sen that he has captured Akari and Michelle, along with two crew members. Meanwhile, Akari's teammates are digging underground towards the annex ship. They know their location because of Jared's echolocation, while Peggy was digging to the annex. According to Wolf, who has powers like a hammerhead shark, they can't go to the top of the ground because there is still bacteria left. So they wait until dawn to destroy the signal jamming tower and tell everyone on Earth that the Chinese have betrayed them. Meanwhile, Jilin is on his way to their base when suddenly a giant net stops them. So Jilin puts it on autopilot and goes out to protect the ship from a horde of terraformers coming their way. All he has is that one blade, and he fights without using any mutant powers. Since there are thousands of terraformers coming at them, Jilin throws Alex and Yako away as a distraction. Alex saved Yako from falling, and he also ran out of medicine to activate his power. Alex made him run away, but Yako chose to protect him. She uses the medicine and reveals her own mutation, the striped skunk. After she released the stinky smell, the terraformers stopped moving. While she was carrying Alex to escape, Yako was suddenly shot at her legs by a hybrid terraformer with the power to shoot highly compressed water. The terraformer also shoots Jilan's arm and wonders where they got the ability. Meanwhile, Yako falls down in pain. Now that Yako is injured and cannot move, the terraformers step forward and kick Alex until he bleeds. A terraformer is about to strike the two of them. However, the terraformer drops dead. Coming to their rescue is the number one ranked warrior Joseph, the leader of the 6th division. He tells them that they will be okay because the number one ranking is here. Before anything else, Joseph gave the medicine to Alex and Yako to speed up their recovery. When the terraformers sensed that Joseph was strong, they rushed towards him, but Joseph was confident in his ability and immediately sliced them one by one. Even if the number one warrior was alone, he was not afraid of the many terraformers. After slicing some terraformers, three of them ride the vehicle to catch up to Akari and Michelle. Joseph was featured on TV with the nickname Speedy Joe, a popular 17-year-old high school senior who earned a gold medal. It was a competition known as the King of the Athletes. His powers and base surgery are unknown, 
but he is powerful enough to take on enough terraformers to make a mountain-sized pile out of their bodies without transforming. His strength, speed, and endurance are the result of 600 years of selective breeding on humans conducted by the Newton clan. They quickly catch up with Jilan's ship while he slices the terraformers along the way. Joseph was able to make his vehicle land inside the ship, coming face to face with Jilan. Even though Jilan is facing the number one warrior on the planet Mars, he will still finish the mission. Joseph and Jilan go all out against each other while also fighting the terraformers, which are attacking them at the same time. Joseph suddenly dropped his sword and stepped back, which Jilan took. Michelle was surprised by what Joseph did. Then Jilan was suddenly shot by a hybrid terraformer with highly compressed water. Joseph explains that the terraformer have a priority list for their targets, and one of those targets is holding a weapon. Jilin needed to take medicine, so he planned to kick Michelle out to distract his enemies, but Joseph got furious with him because he has a crush on Michelle. The number one fighter finished him off, breaking his leg and then throwing him overboard. Jilin is immediately killed by a horde of terraformers. The hybrid terraformer continue attacking from a distance. Michelle asks what happened to his crew, and Joseph responds that the water bullet power belonged to one of his members. He revealed that before they could get out of their ship, they were surrounded by terraformers, so he used swarming pheromones to get the huge army of them to come after him. He thought he had gotten all the terraformers in the area, meaning that his crew members are all probably dead. While Joseph drives the ship, and Yako gives the drug to Michelle and Akari. Joseph was confident that they would succeed in the mission because when they returned to Earth, he wanted to marry Michelle, who was surprised by this. Michelle wishes she could tell him to shut up, but she can't do that since Joseph literally just saved her and her teammates' lives, so she agrees to have lunch with him once they get back on Earth. Meanwhile, Wolf felt the departure of Leeson's men, who were on their way to start the mission, when suddenly Jilin came to the place where they were hiding. Jilin promptly shoots the members. So, Keiji and Marcos take their drugs and quickly engage him in battle. Marcos acted quickly and defeated him, cracking his neck. But behind him is another Jilan, who is holding Peggy hostage. Then Peggy released a spike from behind, and all of them ran to get inside the spaceship while Marcos was facing Jilan alone. Unfortunately, Peggy was caught by the dragonfly terraformer and was thrown into many terraformers. Peggy! While they were running, they felt a strong wind because it turned out to be many cockroaches driving away the remaining bacteria in the area. The Annex ship releases a large net to capture all the terraformer around it. Meanwhile, the rest of them enter the Annex ship. There, they find out that there's a biological weapon active right now, and their bodies will only last for 15 minutes inside. The Dragonfly Terraformer also entered the ship, and Keiji faced it alone because he ordered them to close the doors so that no one would be caught in their fight. Keiji holds it back with his boxing skills, and the Dragonfly Terraformer is too fast, and Keiji loses one arm. The Dragonfly Terraformer was getting dizzy because he had been hit in the jaw. Keiji took the opportunity to punch him in the face and beat the dragonfly. Outside the Annex ship, Marcos comes face to face with Jilan and two more of them. Jilan reveals that he has the power of a sea squirt, which can clone itself. Marcos is also informed by Jilan that a Chinese battleship is coming towards Mars. They will execute everybody who is not a Chinese ally as soon as it gets here, so he asks Marcos to join his side, and his friends will be saved too. So Marcos lays down his weapon and relaxes on the ground. When Jilin starts talking cheerfully like he is assuring his safety, Marcos drives his staff right through his smug face. When two Jilans shoot at him, Marcos stops all the bullets and kills them. Inside the Annex ship, KG gets separated from the rest of the team because the door now cannot be opened. He decides to go alone to the control room, while the rest will get the protective suit for bacteria. Before he went, he regenerated his arm and left. As his teammates searched for the protective armor, they were surprised to find that the other terraformers were also inside and wearing protective suits. And they even destroyed the remaining suits and masks so they could no longer be used. They also found many clones of Jilin, which they destroyed. The engineers ran, and the terraformers followed them. 
but instead of attacking them, they immediately went for Jilan and Hong. Jilan immediately responded to the punch and ordered Hong to hide inside. But the terraformer uses the fire extinguisher to keep the door from closing. So, Jilin holds them back, despite being 2v1. He tried to protect her, but one of the terraformer turned out to be a hybrid. He was shot in the back, but Hong helped him by cutting whatever that thing was. Because of the hole in Jilin's suit, Hong doesn't want to use his power because Jilin will also die. Then Jilin couldn't move because of the effects of the poison. The terraformers are about to kill Hong and Jilin, but Keiji stops one of them while Chun-Li stops the other one. Despite Chun-Li's invisibility, Keiji can still see him, so he ordered the woman to put on her clothes. Because Keiji is their enemy, Chun-Li didn't let it pass and immediately punched it hard. Keiji, being a gentleman, doesn't want to hit a woman, even if she hits him. So when Chun-Li beats him up, he does not hit back. He gets hurt terribly, but Keiji keeps coming back. While Keiji is holding them, the rest of his team members reach the control room using Erika's powers, just like a gecko, with six minutes left for the bacteria to start working on them. Meanwhile, Liu San and three Jilin clones are still looking for Michelle and Akari. On the other hand, Joseph decides to find Liu San because he knows that Liu San will start firing long-range missiles at Michelle and Akari if Liu San fails to capture them. Captain Kamachi is also fighting the terraformers, and they realized all the terraformers were coming from the direction of Annex, who is escaping from the bacteria. Inside the Annex, Wolf remains motivated even with only six minutes left before their bodies are completely destroyed by the bacteria. Even if they are non-combatant, engineering skills are high. They are about to hack the spaceship system, but there is also a terraformer inside the control room that punches the screen. Hearing this outside, Chun-Li realizes that the engineers are already inside. Keiji immediately went in to save the fellow engineers. Chun-Li tries to stop their hacking, so Keiji holds her down. The terraformer suddenly tries to kill Hong, but unexpectedly, Keiji saves his life anyway. There are only three minutes left for the engineers, but because of what happened, they need to start hacking again, or they won't make it. Keiji had to make a decision, so he decided to break the floor to save his friends. They all survive the fall using one of the members' webs, and because of this, they can't do the mission. But the terraformer is still alive, and Chun-Li and Keiji were forced to help each other to kill the terraformer, but it seems to have had no effect. The terraformer has the power of a radial, which is capable of absorbing and distributing any impact. Despite Keiji and Chun-Li's combined efforts, the radial terraformer proves to be too strong for them to defeat. So Keiji punches with full power while Chun-Li guides it with her precision. They kill the radal, but the force knocks them both out as well. The 15 minutes were over, and Wolf regrets not being able to hack the tower, and now the bacteria will start taking effect. It's a good thing that Amelia was left in the control room, and despite the poison that is slowly killing her, Amelia is still not giving up. Meanwhile, on Earth, Herma is still waiting to contact them and believes they will survive on Mars. While Amelia is doing her best to hack into the system, Akari and Michelle are fending off a lot of terraformers again. Amelia was able to survive for a long time due to her surgical powers as a narwhal, as she was able to shut down some of her organs that she was not using except her fingers, brain, and eyes, which were needed for the mission. While working on the system, she thinks about how much she loves Keiji and how she's afraid of dying. Finally, Amelia was able to contact the Earth, but she was so weak that he couldn't say what she had to say. The only thing that came out of his mouth was to save us. All the world leaders quickly work towards sending a rescue ship to Mars. While in the middle of the battle, they heard Akari say that their communication device is now connected to Earth, and Liu San was nervous to find out about it. Unexpectedly, some terraformers show up at the door, ready to kill Amelia. She is about to be killed, but Jared and Marcos, two other members of her squad, are there to save her. They had to move quickly because many terraformers were approaching. Back on Earth, UNASA finds out that there are three ships going toward Mars. One is that Chinese battleship, and there are two others as well. They managed to rescue Jared and the others, and they were given Hong's antidote, so the engineers were saved from the poison while their spaceship was completely taken over by the terraformers. Amelia blames herself for not being able to say what was supposed to be said on the radio, but Captain Kamachi reveals that the officer's radio came back online, and they were able to hear everything. 
This is when Akari and Michelle contacted the German government and told them everything about the Chinese betrayal. Captain Kamachi thanks her and her teammates for sacrificing so much to get those precious 10 seconds. Despite losing so many people, Kamachi says that their mission has been successful. Now they have to wait for their rescue ships. They also found out that Hong doesn't know much about Liu San's plans, so they're waiting for Chun Li to wake up so they can contact Liu San and report that the executives on Earth have found out about their evil plans. Despite this, Liu San is still in pursuit of his goal, so he plans to send a missile to Akari when Joseph suddenly arrives. Akari and Michelle, along with Yeko and Alex, continue their journey to North, as commanded by Captain Kamachi. Captain Kamachi also brings his entire combined division to the north. He says that they'll be going to the sea. While on Earth, the terraformers have also arrived, and they pretend that they are talking to people. Elsewhere, two other terraformers can be seen living a normal life in an apartment. Elsewhere, on Mars, one of the mutant terraformers obtains the electricity power that Adolf used to have, while a group of politician terraformers look over him. And this is where the whole season 2 ends. Subscribe for more videos like this, turn on the notification, and leave a like to help the channel out. Thanks for watching.